In this video, we're going to take a look at the last of our tests, which is the root test. As you can see, I cheated a little bit, and I went ahead and filled in the rules for the root test, even though we haven't used the root test yet. But as you can see, now we have all of our rules and all of our series together in one place. Your book also has a really excellent and actually a bit more detailed um, table that talks about all of the tests that we've used and that is on page 636. So feel free to look that up or to take a screen grab of that and put it in your OneNote notebook as well. So as you can see, this is going to be a very similar test that the test we just did, the ratio test. And the only difference is instead of taking the ratio or dividing a sub n plus one divided by a sub n, we're now going to take the nth root. That's why it's called the root test. So I'm going to find the limit as n approaches infinity of the square root, I'm sorry, the nth root of the absolute value of a sub n. So a sub n is all of this, negative three n over two n plus one, all to the three n power. Now the great thing about the root test is the nth root and the n exponent cancel each other out. So that gives me the limit as n approaches infinity, and now all of a sudden that root is gone. So I have the absolute value of negative 3n over 2n plus 1 all to the third. Now, this is an absolute value, so just as we talked about in previous lessons, we're going to think about what happens with the absolute value. So I still have the limit as n approaches infinity, but this value in the numerator, the negative is going to go away because the absolute value will make it go away. So even though it's going to be negative three to the third, which would be a negative 27, I'm going to keep it as positive because the absolute value would make it positive. So I'm going to write this as 3n, and I'm going to keep that 3 on the outside, so I'm not going to distribute that 3. And then I'm going to think about 2n plus 1. Well, 2n plus 1 is going to be positive as n is approaching infinity, so I can take that out of the absolute value as well. So now what I'm looking at is the limit as n approaches infinity of 3n over 2n plus 1. So as we just talked about in our last example, we can think about those influential terms, or if you're uncomfortable with the idea of just throwing caution to the wind like that, remember that we're able to say, hey, let's take 3n times 1 over n, and let's take 2n, oops, 2n times 1 over n, and let's take 1 times 1 over n, and that gives us 3n over n is just 3, 2n over n is just 2, and 1 times 1 over n is 1 over n, and then as I take that limit as n approaches infinity, that limit is 3 halves, again, to the third power. So 3 halves to the third power is going to give me 27 eighths, and 27 eighths is greater than 1. And if 27 eighths is greater than 1, then the series diverges. So therefore, by the root test, the series diverges. Let's take a look now at another example. And again, we're going to start off the same way. We're going to look at the limit as n approaches infinity of the nth root of a sub n, or the absolute value of a sub n. So this is e to the negative 3n, which is really the same as 1 over e to the 3n. And this one's gonna take a little bit more, you know, use with properties. Things that you're familiar with or aware of, but maybe haven't used in a while. So I'm going to think of this as the limit as n approaches infinity of the nth root of one, or the nth root of the absolute value of one, over the nth root of the absolute value of e to the three n. 
And again, the reason I did that is because I can easily take the limit, I'm sorry, I can easily take the nth root of one because the nth root of one is one. So now I've been able to get rid of the absolute value and the square root in my numerator. In my denominator, I have n, the nth power and the nth root canceling. And so I have the absolute value of e to the third. And e to the third is always going to be positive, so I don't need the absolute value either. So now I have the limit as n approaches infinity of one over e to the third, which notice there is no n any longer. So the limit is one over e to the third. So now I just have to determine is that less than one, greater than one, or equal to one using a calculator. You can determine that that is less than one. So therefore, by the root test, we can say that the summation as n goes from zero to infinity of e to the negative three n converges absolutely. Again, because it was less than one. In this course, we do not cover section 9.7. So up next is section 9.8, beginning with the power series.